All right, so in this video, I'm going to be solving the equation x to the power of x to the power of 3 is equal to 729. So to solve this, what I'm first going to do is take the power of 3 on both sides. So I get x to the power of x to the power of 3 to the power of 3 is equal to 729 to the power of 3. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. Now, m times n, I can also rewrite as n times m. And if something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m times n, then a to the power of n times m should also equal to a to the power of n to the power of n. So in simpler terms, a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. So now from here, I have x to the power of x to the power of 3 to the power of 3. And I can think of x to the power of 3 as m and 3 as n. So if I switch the places of these two, I get x to the power of 3 to the power of x to the power of 3. And remember, this is equal to 729 to the power of 3. Now, from here, I'm going to let x to the power of 3 equal to the variable y. So I get y to the power of y is equal to 729 to the power of 3. Now, I can simplify 729 to the power of 3. So 729 is the same thing as, so 729, let's find some factors of this. So a factor of 729, let's try to divide this by 3. 729 divided by 3, we have 2 over here, so we get 6. We subtract 7 with 6, we get 1, we bring down to 2. 3 times 4 is 12, and now we bring them to 9, 3 times 3 is 9. So I get 729 is equal to 243 times 3. Now, 243, if I divide this by 3, I get 81. So I have this times 3 times 81, or sorry, I have 3 times 3 times 81, and 81 is the same thing as 3 to the power of 4. So I have 3 times 3 times 3 to the power of 4, which is equal to 3 to the power of 6, meaning 729 is the same thing as 3 to the power of 6. And 3 to the power of 6 I can break that down into 3 squared times 3 squared times 3 squared, which is equal to 9 to the power of 3. So I'm going to replace 9 to the power of 3 with 729. So I get y to the power of y is equal to 9 to the power of 3 to the power of 3. And the reason I did this is because 3 to the power, 9 to the power of 3 to the power of 3 is the same thing as 9 to the power of 3 times 3. And 3 times 3 is 9, so I get y to the power of y is equal to 9 to the power of 9. And now I can use the property a to the power of a is equal to, if a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, this means that a equals b. So in this case, y is equal to 9. Now, recall how I let x to the power of 3 equal to y, meaning I get x to the power of 3 is equal to 9. So now to solve this, I'm going to take the cube root on both sides. So I get the cube root of x to the power of 3 is equal to the cube root of 9. Now the cube root of x to the power of 3 is simply just x. So I get x is equal to the cube root of 9. And this is the same thing as 9 to the power of 1 third.
All right, so for this video, I'm gonna be solving the equation x to the power of four is equal to negative nine. So what I'm first gonna do is add nine on both sides. So then these two cancel out and I get x to the power of four plus nine is equal to zero. Now from here, I can rewrite x to the power of four as x squared to the power of two. And I can rewrite nine as three squared. And if I have something in the form a plus b squared, this is equal to a squared plus b squared plus 2ab. And if I have something in the form a squared plus b squared, then this must mean that this is going to equal a plus b squared minus 2ab, because this is the same thing as this without the 2ab. So. This means that a is equal to x, to the x squared and b is three. Going back over here, so I get x squared to the power of two plus three squared is equal to x squared plus three squared. And this turns into x squared to the power of two plus three squared is equal to x squared plus three squared minus two times x squared times three is equal to zero. So now from here, I get x squared plus three squared minus six x squared is equal to zero. And remember how the square root of six squared is equal to six. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as x squared plus 3 squared minus the square root of 6x squared is equal to 0. And the reason I did that is because now I can use the property a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, this turns into x squared plus three plus the square root of six x times x squared plus three minus the square root of six x is equal to zero. So this gives me two equations. I have x squared plus three plus the square root of six x is equal to zero and x squared plus three minus the square root of six x equals zero. So for both of these, because both of these are quadratic equations, you can use the quadratic formula to solve them. So by using the quadratic formula, I'm actually gonna, not gonna do that in the video, but you can try that yourself. You should get that x is equal to the square root of six times negative one plus i over two. And x is also equal to the square root of six times negative one minus i over two. And also along with this, you should get x is equal to the square root of six times i plus one over two. And x is equal to the square root of six times i, or sorry, times one minus i over two. So these are your four solutions.